There you are. May I assume you've had your fill of rest? That is well. Now that we are all present, let us speak of our plan. Thus far, we have vanquished four Night Wardens, restoring Night to much of Norvrat. Only one remains, that of Calusia. And with Reen to guide us, I am certain we will find it. We're so close now. If we can just take care of this one last Warden, we'll rob the Sin Eaters of their final foothold and drive them out of Norvrant once and for all. It will be a new beginning for the first, a chance for the people to rebuild their world. In short, a prize worth fighting for. And in thus delivering the first from destruction, so too shall we unsow the seeds of the eighth umbral calamity. Do you hear? Your dreams of rejoining is in jeopardy. Are you sure you're not tempted to intervene? <sighs> you labor under the misapprehension that vanquishing the Sin Eaters is tantamount to saving the world. It is not. In truth, you only delay the inevitable, lengthening your fleeting lives by the smallest of margins. It would be churlish of me to deny you this small concession, close as we've become. Foolish and misguided though you are, you are not without charm. Each and every one of you is possessed of a noble heart. When the weak want for succor, you do not hesitate to provide it. Alas, your nobility is short-sighted. You think only of the problem in front of your nose. A limitation of your ephemeral existence. Our lives may seem short and insignificant to the likes of you, but one does not need to be an eternal being to achieve lasting change. Uh, if I may stop you there, I do not claim that we Asians are special. That is another misconception. In the beginning, everyone, everyone lived nigh for eternity. Such was the natural order of things. But like so much else, this was taken from you. You won't object if I borrow your plaything. In the distant past, when the world was one and whole, a great calamity threatened all life. It began without warning. The very laws of the star were warped and broken, and chaos swiftly spread throughout the land. Faced with annihilation, we sought to imbue the star with its own will. Thus was Zodiac born and by his power was order restored. Ere long, however, thankless fools began to fear that Zodiac's might was too great, and so they conjured another to keep him in check, your own dear Hydeve. And the two beings waged war until, with a single devastating blow, Hydaelyn unmade Zodiac, scattering his being across space and time. So you told us in the Katana Ravel. Yes, yes. And there began our woes with Hydaelyn's blow and all that it wrought. As a counterbalance to Zodiac, Hydaelyn was created with the power to enervate her foe. This singular ability strikes not at such banal things as flesh, but everything that defines the target, diluting its existence. For example, was she to strike you?
two individuals, identical in appearance yet reduced in all respects, strength, intelligence, the soul itself. All is halved. Do you see? This self-same fate befell not only Zodiac, but the very star. Only three were fortunate enough to escape the sundering, me being one of them. When I beheld the shattered remnants of our home, I knew deepest despair. The inhabitants of these 14 fragments were feeble, frail and foolish oblivious to their imperfection, ignorant of their past. Malformed creatures thrashing blindly about, pitiful, disturbing, depressing. So, we took it upon ourselves to rejoin the worlds. But in our eagerness and, I confess, our ignorance, we erred and made a useless void of the 13th. It was only afterwards that we discovered a connection twixt source and shard, a flow of energy that maintains elemental balance. And thus did we arrive at our time-honored modus operandi. From a purely Asian standpoint, it could be said that what you seek to do is only logical. But that would be to ignore the immeasurable destruction wrought with each rejoining. You have murdered millions, and this we cannot condone. By your fragmented existence, you continue to give rise to tragedies far crueler than any calamity. But yes, moral relativism and all that. Case in point, I do not consider you to be truly alive, ergo, I will not be guilty of murder if I kill you. Oh, don't look at me like that. You, for whom I have only the highest expectations. A vaunted hero of the Source, seven times rejoined. Long have I awaited one who might brave a path of lesser tragedy. A resilient soul able to endure the necessary pain. I dare to hope that my wait is over. So, finish your task and slay the Light Warden. Make proof of your usefulness, and then we may speak again. Forgive me, my lord, but this could not wait. Speak freely, Captain. Our informant in Colusia sends word of unusual activity in Yulmore. It appears their forces are entrenching themselves at key points throughout the city, making ready for an attack by all indications. An intriguing use of resources. I rather doubt Lord Vorthree's concern for the safety of his citizens. You think he's harboring the Light Warden inside the city walls? Even if he does have some means of controlling the Sin Eaters, wouldn't that be a little risky? Risky or not, if there is even a chance the Warden is hiding there, we will need to act fast. The longer we wait, the better prepared the Yulmorans will be. Agreed. See to your preparations then and make for Calusia. God's willing. This hunt will be the last. Let us see it through to the end.
we should begin by assembling in right. There we may assess the situation in Yulmore and decide how best to proceed.
strange. Passing strange. By their behavior, we may safely assume that they are under Vorthry's mind control. Yet the extent of the effect seemeth to vary dramatically between subjects. It is far too pronounced to be attributed simply to the vagaries of innate magical resistance. Curiouser and curiouser. We met with no trouble en route. My thanks for securing the way. But given the state of the townsfolk, I see we were never in any danger of being recognized. What can you tell us from here? I sense a powerful eater in the uppermost reaches of the city. But there's something different about it. Its light is... impure. We need to get closer. Oh, so that one's Alfino. Well, unless you're triplets. Kaishia, what are you doing here? While I was scouting the area, I noticed a suspicious figure skulking about, so I accosted him, only to have him call me Alfino. I thought it best to bring him along. You see, that informant who's been beating secrets to the Crystarium, it's me. See, after you saved my life in Yulmore, I thought about going somewhere far away, but I couldn't just leave, not without paying you back. So I decided to stay here, keep an eye on things. And whenever I spotted something strange, I shared it with your friends. That took no small amount of courage. Well done. I assume you saw what happened here. Right, so, an airship flew in a bit ago, and not long after, Vorfree starts ranting and raving. You could hear him from all the way out here. Giza was doing his nut! Shouting and screaming like someone had nicked his pie! It is like the airship bore the soldiers sent to thwart our efforts in our meringue. So eventually the yelling dies down, and then this hot, sticky wind comes blowing through. Now that's when everyone went funny. Not everyone but me. Well, me and a couple of newcomers, though even they started mumbling about Vorfri after a while. Not as bad as the rest, mind you. Newcomers. There's something I need Reen to see. This was among the town folks' food stores. Oh, that's just meal. You almost dows this stuff out. No, it it couldn't be. What it is. It's Sin Eater. Meal is made out of Sin Eater. So it is. In limited quantities, it may have little effect on an average individual. Yet if one were to consume it regularly, over a period of several years, I suspect it would do far, far more than merely nourish the body. That Vorthri wieldeth power over Sin Eaters is known. Could it be that those who partake of their flesh do thereby render themselves susceptible to his influence? It would serve to explain why the town's newer arrivals succumbed less quickly than those raised on a diet of meal. He's been rounding up Sin Eaters and feeding them to people. Altering the mouthful by mouthful, all to stop them answering back. There are desperate souls out there killing themselves to escape turning. This is unforgivable. An atrocity. These Sin Eaters. What if they are not simply rounded up? Do you remember what we were told when first we came to the city? Many enter, but none leave.
Let us put an end to it. To this paradise built upon the bones of the poor. Vortra's deeds are beyond justification. Beyond forgiveness. Evil. It's highly probable that the Light Warden is waiting for us somewhere in there. And I'm all for going after it. But our enemies know our faces. They know that we are coming, and they will not let us through without a fight. Like it or not, the time for stealth is past. Now, my friend, if you would be so good as to lead the charge. He would use his own people as shields. This area is older than Gate Town. There are bound to be far more civilians under Vorthra's control. But they do not act of their own free will, and we must not harm them. As if we ever would. Press on with Alphano. We'll hold off the civilians and join you as soon as we can.
Pay me back later. I'll break your funny bone. You will find my master in his chamber. But only should you kill me this day, and you will not. You may think me under his spell, but I uphold Lord Forthry's ideals of my own volition. Man is an inherently flawed creature. In his vain pursuit of righteousness, he but sows the seeds of future conflict. Thus, have I chosen to place my hopes upon he who has transcended men, upon he who is unbound by the vagaries of conscience. But enough talk. I am a soldier, and you are my enemy. Come, let us settle this once and for all.
Lord Vorthry, your reign of tyranny is at an end. For too long you have preyed upon the desperation of the poor. Now you will answer for the suffering you have caused. And if you harbor even a shred of remorse, I beseech you to use your powers to redress the balance for the future of all in Norvrant. No, it can't be. This is wrong. It's wrong. The Warden, it's not just a Sin Eater. It's a man. Remorse? For the future of all? What nonsense is this? There is no justice but mine. No future but mine. No will but mine. It is preordained. I was born to deliver this wretched world. Me? Unseated? No, 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 no. It's impossible. Inconceivable. Absurd. I am a great and wise king. Greatest and wisest. I reign from on high. I will not be brought low by maggots like you! Ah! Oh, yes, of course. I can begin again. Rebuild my paradise. Once I finish my dinner. Oh, God, no, stop him. Thank Chris, stop him. Where did he go? What in the heavens? Did Vorthry do that? Wait. That is Mount Gorg, the highest peak in Calusia. It lies on the other side of a sheer cliff, and much as I wish it were otherwise, it is beyond our reach for now. But even if it weren't, there are people here who need our help. Oh, Alpha, no.
please. Even if it's only to tend to their wounds. Thank you. I don't know if it will work, but if Vorthri's hold over the people is rooted in light, I might be able to reverse its effects. Will you let me try? Of course. We'd be grateful for any help you can provide. Well then, if it's decided, let's all get to work. You're going to be all right. I think that's the last of them. We've done all we can for the wounded. As for the rest... Let me handle this. Citizens of Yulmor, what I'm about to tell you will come as a shock. Indeed, you may be loath to believe it, but if you trust the evidence of your senses, 
It is my hope that you will listen and accept the truth, unpalatable though it may be. Vorthri is a sin eater. Everything he offered, everything he promised, was a lie. They're not taking it well, and who could blame them? Are you saying we were Vorthry's puppets all this time? When you attacked us, you were not yourselves. That much is true. But your conduct prior to that moment was your own. Vorthry's unnatural charisma does not absolve you of all responsibility. Of your own free will, you came to the city and gave yourselves over to its pleasures. And in the course of this, if you mistreated those less fortunate than you, then that too was of your own free will. It is not for me to judge you, but for your victims, for history, for your conscience. You have dreamed a twisted dream, but now you are awake. You may yet share this world of ours. Join with us and each other that we might begin anew. We've lost so many already. We dare not lose any more. I have said my piece. My thanks for giving me the chance. There is nothing more to be done here. Let us go after Vorthri. Is there anything we can do to help? You risked your lives to bring us to our senses, and I for one hope to repay that debt. Begin anew, as you said. Vorthry has fled to Mount Gulg, and we mean to pursue him. Do any of you know the way? The only way to Mount Gulg is over the Bright Cliff. Have you an airship? We will contemplate flight only as a last resort. Were we to come under attack whilst airborne, we would have little hope of defending ourselves. If at all possible, we would prefer to travel by land. Is there a way? The ladder is the only way up and down the cliff, but it hasn't moved in a long time. In the old days, it was operated by the mining folk who lived at the top. After the flood, it saw less and less use, and when Lord Vorthry took control, it was abandoned altogether. So we somehow need to get the ladder working again. It moves by means of a talos, if that's any help. But good luck repairing that. Talos? D did someone say Talos? You know all about them, don't you, dearest? If anyone can get this lift moving, it's you. Um, well, perhaps. But, but, but see here. Oh, yes. If you want the golem restored, you may leave it to my husband. For he happens to be the heir to Daedalus Stoneworks, foremost makers of Talos, whose contracts include the renowned mining venture of Armoreng. It's... well, it's been years and years since I had anything to do with it. I, I can't just pick up a hammer and set to work. You... you can't. No, that, that, that's not what I... It's just... Uh... All right. I will take a look at the Talos. But beyond that, I make no promises. Those with strong backs, come with me. I'll need help dragging the damn thing out of the storehouse.
Well done, brother. Come, my friend. We have work to do.
Would you look at that? The citizens of Yulemore engaging in what can only be described as manual labor. Who would have thought it possible? Do you know the most reliable way to deal with those who stubbornly refuse to see reason? You conquer them, crush them under heel. Such was the trusted method of Alec, and one still favored by Garlemald. But conquest is the easy part. The true challenge begins once the dust has settled, quenching the glowing embers of animosity and maintaining a semblance of peace. This requires the conqueror to treat the conquered with dignity and the conquered to let bygones be bygones, a difficult feat to achieve. But you have achieved just that, to my considerable surprise. It's a compliment, take it. The vibrant energy that fills the air when like-minded souls gather. To think back on that time before time, fair brings a tear to the eye. What? You thought ancient beings like us incapable of crying? Well, rest assured that if your heart can be broken, then so can mine. Back when the world was whole, we had family, friends, loves. Men knew peace and contentment, and with our adamant souls, we could live for an age. There was no conflict born of want or disparity. Our differences paled into insignificance next to all we had in common. And then there was Amarok. Never was a city more magnificent. From the humblest streets to the highest spires, she fairly gleamed. Not that you would remember any of this. Never mind. The point is, the world of old was a far better place than what we have now. I believe you would like it, having witnessed the things you have. Remember, you are of the source. Unlike the half-men here, you stand only to gain. Should you survive the remaining calamities, you will become our equal. A complete existence in a complete world. But such talk is a pleasure for later. Back to work, hero. Ah, there was one thing I had meant to ask. How well do you know the Exile? Has he ever deigned to show you what hides beneath the cow? What? Never? Even to you? How very interesting. I shall enjoy working out what it means. Until next time. It's alive. I don't know if you remember, but when we first met in this world, I was all but spent. I never thought to wonder why until now. I 
think it all just got to be too much. The guilt of causing the flood. Knowing everyone hated me. But the worst thing was the solitude. Time wears you down, I. But solitude eats away at you. It was this close to finishing me off. But as bad as it got, and as empty as I felt, I can't even begin to imagine what it must be like for Emmett Selk. All of which is a long way of saying, don't make a choice that leaves you alone. Nothing is worth that, especially not eternity. Glad tidings, my friend. The ladder lives again. The three of us have been invited to do the honors. Are you up for it? Of course, if you're worried that the whole thing might come crashing down, we can always find someone else. That's the spirit. Come on, then. We rode the ladder too, my comrades and I. Once upon a time. Watch the horizon grow, and the town shrink below us. Awed and terrified in equal measure, we ascended without a word, the silence broken only by the rhythm of the gears. No one but me remembers that day. Remembers our journey and our end. Retread the path. Seek and you may yet find. <laughs> 